Today you're going to be learning about masking, which is just basically erasing something to select it, but you're not actually erasing it, you're just hiding it from the picture. And another th cool thing you can do with this is you could place other images inside your masking area that you did to create a cool image without actually redoing the cutout. So on this example, there is a flower with a masking cut out. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But then there's a simple clock layer. So if I disable that, there's just um yeah, yeah, there's just a simple clock which is n there's nothing uh different about it. But if you place it inside of the layer mask, then oh, it should be Oh yeah. All right, yeah. Then um it will use the layer mask on the outside to show the image of the clock. And you can make some really cool effects with this feature. Uh this is a main feature in Photoshop that you should master to uh do some cool projects like this uh crystal ball picture I made a few days ago. Um it started out as just me holding a basketball so let's see if I disable that and that it's just me holding a basketball but with masking and a few other selection tools and some filters you can make a really cool image see all the masks on the right side now I'll show you how to do one of those right now so let's say you want to mask this image now normally when you select an image you would create a new layer like this you still do and then you use your selection tool and make a rough selection here then you select it but what if you didn't like the way you selected this then later you'd have to go back to this source picture and reselect your image and that's just honestly too much work you shouldn't have to do that so what you first need to do is when you're on the thing you want to mask you just create a new layer command J or control J on a windows and then you click this button down here and it says add layer mask now what this does is it creates a white palette next to your picture and you paint with your paintbrush or your paint bucket uh, in black or white now what the black does is it hides that that part that you paint and what the white does is it shows it so if we start out um, make sure you clicked on this and my opacity is not high enough uh, you can see it looks like you're erasing uh, and this is supposed to happen because you're not actually erasing it you're just hiding it from the picture so if we make a rough cutout like this and let's say that's how we want it but then if you were erasing you'd have to go into your history tab and go back a couple steps if you messed up like right here since I missed the sides I'd have to go back steps but instead what you can do is you change your color to white and by that you click X which is the shortcut to change your colors in the color palette down in the bottom left or you can click this top thing and then click X again but yeah that's the shortcut for that so then you make sure you're on your layer mask still and you can paint it back in now it doesn't actually delete anything as you can see um, it you're just hiding it from the picture so then you can go back and forth try to do this and I'm gonna go ahead and delete that make another one again what you can do is you use your selection tool like normal since that's the easiest way to select a circle um yeah like that about so then normally since you want the inside of this you would just do command J but if you try to paint inside of this with uh, make a new layer mask uh, paint inside of this Whoops. oh well that's actually a lot easier than I was about to explain so I guess CS5 has added that feature um, 
yeah, that's pretty cool. So um, now you can use this as a normal selection image. No matter where you drag it, it's not going to change. You can see your bottom uh, black and white masking palette. And there's me. So what I could do is I'll go ahead and drag this over to the crystal ball. I could do create clipping mask. Now what this does is it puts my picture inside of my clipping inside of my uh, area mask in the picture below. So that's a really clean way to do that. Um, you can res your picture. Nothing is nothing is deleted from the picture you put inside the clipping mask. It just confines your picture into the clipping mask you uh, did in this er earlier thing. So I could shrink it, um, drag it over. It's still inside of that area. So if we go over to the masking exercise that I showed you before, then as you can see, the clock actually goes into this mask and this mask goes into this one and this one goes into this one so this is your base clipping mask right here which is just a flower as normally selected and then you put a universe inside of that one and then you want to put this inside of that and then you want to put the clock inside of the whole thing so as you can see you don't have to select every single image and cut it out exactly and then layer them on top of each other <clears throat> you don't have to do that that's too much work so what you can do is just create one base clipping mask and put all your images above and make sure that you right click and do cre uh, create clipping mask and you could also do release clipping mask if you don't if you want to revert to what you had before so yeah that's the basics of clipping masks um, our next project is going to be using clipping masks, selection images, and enhancing photos. So if you want to go download those from the website at pluggertech.com, you can also watch Lesson 6 if you're not sure how to do that. Um, yeah, so get ready for Project 2. It's going to be combining a bunch of images into one uh, image that is unique and works well together so I'll show you a couple examples of that next time so uh, comment rate subscribe I'd really like to know if you guys are getting any help from these videos like the video if you thought it taught you something and let me know what I can do better